Welcome to Buzzers Lost and Found. These rarely seen episodes are brought to you by Chewy.com. Shop today and save 20% on pet food and more. Could Bat Sajak hitch his oxymoron to a cart? When Betty White goes ding bat hunting, does she use a net? Is Stuart Pankin's kismet listed in the telephone book? We'll find out the answer to those questions and a lot more as we play television's funniest new game show, Wordplay. And here's your host, the man of many words, Peter Tomatkin. Interesting words, big cash, and very funny definitions. And here to give us those definitions is our celebrity panel. Let's meet him right now. We have with us the host of one of the most popular game shows in TV history, Wheel of Fortune, Mr. Pat Sajak. All right, thank you. Thank you. And we have with us an Emmy Award winner and star of the hit series Golden Girls is Betty White. We have the star of the popular TV series, not necessarily the news, Stuart Pankin. <laughs> Welcome, Stuart. Good to have you with us. Thank you. All right. Now that we've met our celebrities, let's meet today's contestants. And to do that, Rod Roddy's going to tell us all about him. Rod? Okay, Peter. Please welcome our returning champion, a former professional ball player who is now active in marketing and promotion, Patrick McKeeza. And his challenger, a housewife who enjoys watching soccer and raising her ten children, Luana Hurley. Welcome back. You won $5,700 yesterday. What are you going to do with the money? Well, I figure since how it's newfound money, we'll try something different and go try a round-the-world trip on scuba diving or something different. That sounds great. <laughs> Good luck. All right. And also, Luana, 10 children? My, you took time out from your busy schedule just to come here. Sure. My, my. Always like to do something. <laughs> well, you want to play the game, make some money? Love to. Let's do it. Here's how we play our game. Our board is made up of words that are familiar and not so familiar, but they are all in the dictionary. Contestants, when it's your turn, you choose a word from our board. Each celebrity will give you a definition. However, only one of our celebrities is correct. Choose the correct definition, and you win the money hidden under that word. If you're wrong, your opponent gets a chance at the money. After the first word is chosen, you can then win extra money by choosing certain words on our board. But I'll explain that when we get to it. Okay? Got it? Let's look at the words we'll be playing today. They are egress. Dingbat, we have oxymoron, of course, ignominious, poetaster, acme, piquant, kismet, and mollify. <laughs> Interesting group of words. Uh, you are a returning champ, Patrick, so you get to pick the first word. Which one do you want? Well, let's try uh, Wiley e. Coyote's favorite company, acme. Acme, all right, and let's go to the game show host, illustrious Mr. Pat Sajak. Thank you so the much. definition, please. Yeah, well, actually, you made a good point by uh, mentioning Wiley e. Coyote because you see the name acme on a lot of uh, stores and companies and businesses because acme means discount, and that's why I see it. Sometimes that's good, sometimes it's not good. You use your, you know, like if you see, oh, you know, acme, dog training, and uh, carpet cleaning. Stay away from that uh, outfit. That would be good. Would you like another one? I guess. No. <laughs> Incidentally, the show is being produced by the Acme Brothers, so you'd have to be very careful. Anyway, it means discount is what it means. Discount. Yeah. Thank huh? you, Pat. Certainly. Discount. Yes. Very well done. Benny, what is the uh, definition of the word acme? Highest. The highest of anything. Acme is the is the highest it, the highest place on the planet, for example, is Mount Everest. Uh, the acme of my career is now. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> and um, I had an idea for Luana, though, if she'd let her hair grow and had to sleep on rollers, perhaps that would help her. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. But getting, back, getting back to Acme, uh, in opera, the highest note ever reached by a, a male voice was Pavarotti in Mozart's The Cow Herd and the Cattle Prod. <laughs> means the highest point. Oh. I see, thank you, Betty. Highest point. Some very good advice as well. <laughs> Stuart looks like, uh, looks like he really knows the definition. Well, of course I do. Acme means hard working. I'll give you an example. In ancient Greece, there were three guys, Atlas, Ajax, and Acme. And Zeus, it's, I didn't make it up, it's true. <laughs> Zeus had a contest to see who would be the most hard working. Well, Atlas came in third. He became the god of tires, all right? <laughs> Ajax... I read mythology. Ajax came in second, and he became the god of house cleaning. We've all heard of Ajax, boom, boom, the foaming deity, blah, 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 blah. And 
Kobe won, and Zeus immediately made him the god of uh, moving in storage, which was fine until he pulled a very personal muscle carrying a refrigerator up Mount Olympus. So, <laughs> acne means hard working. Hard working. Thank you. Thank you, celebrities. We have discount highest point and hard working. I promise you one of those is correct. Patrick, up to you. Who has the right definition? Well, let's keep Betty at the high point of her career and go with Betty. All right, is Betty's answer correct? Yes, it is. Acme is indeed the highest point. It is, and it's worth $100 to you. Well done, Patrick. $100. All right, it's your turn, Luana. And earlier I told you there were ways to win extra money on our board. If you choose a word connected to that $100, and right now there are three such words, you get that word right, you'll not only win the money hidden under your word, but also $100 as well. With that in mind, which word do you want? Definitely want to go with the connecting word. Um, I'll try kismet. Kismet, of course. And let's go to Betty White to find out the definition of kismet. Well, kismet is a curse. Again, it's, it's like, it, it, again, it's from ancient mythology, but so many of us were. Uh, <laughs> there was this one individual who displeased the gods, and they made him into a centaur, which was half man and half, half horse, I believe that was. But then there were some rather remote ones that I had never heard of. They're the half woman, half ballpoint pen. <laughs> Half milkman, half, half, and half. <laughs> so, uh, Kismet is a curse. A curse. Definitely a curse. Thank you, Betty. And, Stuart, uh, what is the definition of Kismet, Stuart? Destiny. And uh, some men are born to achieve great Kismet, great destiny. It makes me angry to think of, forgive me for being angry near you. It makes me angry to think about Julius Caesar, a man destined for great. He conquered most of the known world. And what was his Kismet? They named a salad after him. So, what can we expect from our world leaders? Ronald Reagan rump roast? <laughs> the George Bush salad bar enhanced by the Tip O'Neill Speaker of the House dressing? Makes me angry. Kismet means destiny. Well, I can understand your anger. I'm sorry, Stuart. I'm all right. I'm Take fine. a moment. Take a moment for Stuart to calm down. So maybe we, we, we should probably just go right over here to Pat and let Stuart calm down. Yeah. Pat, what do you think? This is answer? easy and not nearly as angry. Uh, kismet means magic. You reach into a hat and you pull out a little furry ball and it's a rabbit. You've done kismet. If you reach into a hat and pull out a furry ball and it's not a rabbit, it's probably Howard Cosell's hat. So you should return it very quickly. <laughs> We are looking uh, for magic. That's it. Magic. Easy. We are no indeed problem. looking for magic. I'm indeed. Not. Well done. Magic, curse, and destiny. Luana. I think I'll go with Stuart. Yes, destiny. Surprise, Stuart. All right. Kismet is indeed destiny. That's worth $150. Connected to the $100 gives you $250. You're in the lead. Patrick, you have $100. We're going to take a break and come right back after these words to play more wordplay. Stay with us. To my word box. It's what my colleague put his computer on. It's fun. And it's your turn to pick a word, Patrick. And remember, anytime you choose a word next to a dollar amount, you increase the amount of money you can win. All right? Pick a word. Well, we have to catch up a little bit and hope Edith Bunker is the definition. Dingbat. Dingbat. All right. We're going to go to uh, Stuart for dingbat. What do you think, Stuart? No, well, it's not Edith Bunker. Dingbat is a little word for a long meaning. It's an anatomical food phrase. We've all, we've all used. I don't lie on this show. No, what are you? <laughs> An anatomical food phrase like a head of lettuce, anatomical, an ear of corn, a leg of lamb. Of course, there are other anatomical food phrases that are less well-known, but valid, like a forehead of melon, a <laughs> neck of mashed potato, please pass a lung of cheese. <laughs> Just as valid, a dingbat is indeed an anatomical food phrase. Food phrase. Anatomical food phrase. That was interesting. Well, I almost believe him. Boy, <laughs> Pat, what do you think it is? If he had said a kidney of ketchup, I was going to leave. <laughs> Far as we go. Where were we? Oh, we were talking about dingbat. Ding yeah. yes. Actually, a dingbat is a small thrown object. Like when you go to a carnival, you want to knock down the milk pails, you know, you toss something at it, and that would be a dingbat. I mentioned carnival because, uh, be looking for this, folks, I'm on a cable TV special called Carnival of the Stars. It's very exciting. <laughs> And I, in it, I have to take Hervé Villachez and knock down the Brady Bunch. It's a very... <laughs> anyway, uh, it is a small thrown object. In that case, Hervé was the uh, dingbat. The small That's thrown it. object. Thank you very much, Pat. My pleasure. Betty, we're all dying of suspense. What's the definition of dingbat? It's a bat that lives in a belfry. It's a belfry bat. Uh, belfries are small, and the bats are fine as long as they're just hanging out there during the day, you know, like this. But when they wake up at night and they start moving around, they begin to bump into those darn bells, and it's ding, ding, ding. <laughs> and finally, they can't take this 
this anymore, and some of them really, they, they literally kill themselves and fall out of the belfry. One particularly sad case, a dingbat fell out of his belfry just as these two priests were walking. Will you please try to stop? <laughs> by and one said what is that who is that and the other one says I don't know but his face rings a bell <laughs> thank you Betty thank you very much for that marvelous a small thrown object a belfry bat and an anatomical food phrase all right it's up to you Patrick who has the right definition it's about as dinging an answer as I can <laughs> I have to go with Betty again. We're on a roll, right, Betty? Thank you, and a fellow animal lover. Uh, Betty, is Betty's answer correct? Oh, oh, a belfry bat. It is not the correct answer. That means control goes to Luana, and you have anatomical food phrase and a small thrown object. A couple of real winners there. Up to you to pick the right That's answer. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Winners, yeah. huh? Which one, Luana? I'll go with Pat. Pat. Is Pat's answer correct? Yes. A small thrown object is indeed a dingbat. And we're talking $200, connecting to $250 more. That's $450. Added to your $250 gives you $700 and the lead. Well done. $700 to $100. And it's your turn, Lorna. Pick another word. Um, connecting, I think I'll go with Potaster. Potaster. All right. We're going to go with Potaster. We go to Betty to find out what the uh, definition of that word is. Oddly enough, that was a new one on me, too, until I researched it. It's Potaster. Poor Taster, and uh, now I just find myself using it all the time. It's, um, it, it's a glass blower, and that's a talent that you can't achieve. You can't learn it. it, it you have to be born with it. And the most famous, what was his name? I can't remember. The most famous glass blower of all was a child prodigy, actually. He'd go to the beach, and the bully would kick sand in his face, and out of his mouth would come stemware for six people. <laughs> a glass blower. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart looks a little puzzled. I agree with her. I think she's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course she's absolutely wrong. A poet asked her is a 50 cent word for a game show host, or what we now call a game show host. <laughs> absolutely true. No, it's true. And as I was doing my research, I began to muse, which I usually do in the privacy of my own home. <laughs> what? What these guys are like at home. First of all, it's a sick profession to go into. <laughs> but they must come through the door and say things like, honey, what's in the refrigerator? <laughs> Time's up! It's macaroni and cheese! <laughs> Grandkids, if you eat fast, we'll take it right in Dad's brand new car! <laughs> A game show host. Game show. So thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Pat, uh, what is the correct definition? Good, John. I happen to have the correct one. I'm very proud to say. Poetaster is poetaster. that the mm -hmm. uh, uh, Poetaster. Poetaster. It sounds elementary, but it's a bad poet. Uh, uh, like the guys who write greeting cards. You know, those are real poetasters. I, I saw one. A sympathy card said, "Sorry about your loss and all of your gloom, but now that you have more space, can I use the guest room?" It was a guest. <laughs> uh, a bad poet. Nice ring to it. Thank you, Pat. Bad poet. We have bad poet, glass blower, and game show host. Uh, Luana, who has the correct answer? I hope Stuart does. You do. Let's find out. Is Stuart right? No, he is not. <laughs> he is not right. Control goes to Patrick. <laughs> Patrick now has bad poet or a glass blower to choose from. Patrick, who has the right answer? Well, I'm certainly glad that she eliminated that one. I'll have to go with uh, namesake there, Pat. Pat, is bad poet correct? Yes, it is indeed a bad poet. That bad poet is worth $300, connected to $450 for a total of $750, gives you $850 and the lead. And when we come back, we're going to play some more with Wordplay. Stay with us. All right, we are back once again. And Patrick, it's your turn to choose a word. Well, we have to connect and uh, build a little lead. Let's go with egress. That is indeed a connecting word, egress. And let's go to Stuart to find out the definition of egress. Egress is a lie. Ah. Thank you, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most famous liars that I know of was, of course, Pinocchio, who was such a good liar, and his nose grew so long when he lied that it became the Verrazano Bridge in Manhattan, which gave rise to the phrase, the bridge of his nose, which, of course, gave rise to the more famous phrase, like a nose over troubled water. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stuart. A lie. Pat, what's the definition of the word egress? Easy. It's a pencil-thin mustache, like Errol Flynn used to have. Uh, Wayne Newton has one now. Madonna has a nice one. <laughs> uh, egress. 
Thank like you. a bird. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Finn Mustache. Yeah. Betty, what Ingress do you think? is an exit. I've, you have your ingress and your egress, and uh, the, the famous egress lines, exit lines through history have been wonderful. Van Gogh's last words were, what? What? <laughs> Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death on second thought, give me liberty. Uh, <laughs> but Marie Antoinette, I think, had the best. Her last words were so thrilling, she said, I've had it up to here with you guys. <laughs> That's egress. Thank you, Betty, an exit. An excellent one. Pat, pencil thin mustache, Betty an exit, and Stuart a lie. Up to you, Patrick. Who uh, has the correct definition? I'd, I'd love to make an exit with Betty. Ah, all right. Let's find out if Betty's answer is correct. Is it? Oh. Yes, an exit. It is indeed an egress. An egress has $150 attached to it, and it's connected to another $750 for a total of $900, which brings your total up to $1,750, Patrick. But the game is far from over. No. Luana, you are behind, and this is the last word of the game. Which word do you want? I'm going to make my move now. I think to go for the money, I'll go for oxymoron. Oxymoron. Good choice. Oxymoron connects to $900. A lot of money is at stake. Let's hear our definitions. Let's go to Pat. Uh, an oxymoron. That, uh, that is a contradiction in terms, kind of mutually exclusive words in the same sentence. Like if you say jumbo shrimp, if you think about it, it doesn't really doesn't make much sense. Or... <laughs> President Carter is another example that comes to mind. <laughs> East German beauty queen. There are a lot of them. <laughs> Nancy Sinatra's greatest hits. I can go on. <laughs> Oxymoron. Good point. Thank you, Pat. So I'm predicting in turn. Betty, you, you look like you really know what this is. I like that, but that's not right. It's um, <laughs> You don't know. I, I know. What, it's having more than eight personalities is an oxymoron. <laughs> It's true, it's true. The best example I can draw is, remember Sally Field in Sybil, when she played the eight people, she'd walk into a restaurant and order a table for one and separate checks. And check would come, she'd say, did you have the toasted cheese? No, I had the tuna. No, you didn't. I, I paid the parking. No, I have, I have so it's having more than eight personalities. Having more than eight personalities. All right. Let's find out. Stuart, what is the definition of the word oxymoron? <laughs> These people are both egressing. Oxymoron. <laughs> In ancient times, the oxymoron was the man who brought bad news to the king, which was not an enviable job, so the town crier would go through the streets going, oxymoron, oxymoron, we need a volunteer. And of course, there was always one guy who would say, uh, I'll do it. So he would, he went over to the king and he would usually say, uh, your highness, your wife's sleeping with the duke. <laughs> and it's true because I got the paintings to prove it. Well, <laughs> the the king would become so furious, he cut his head off. So oxymoron means idiot. <laughs> idiot. <laughs> All right. So you have an oxymoron. Having more than eight personalities and an idiot. All right. You've heard the three definitions. Not only do you need to get it right, but the amount under the word must be worth more than $150. Luana, choose who do you think has the right definition. Oh, Pat, I'm going to go with you and hope you're right. <laughs> Contradiction in terms. Is it the correct definition? Yes, it is. All right, it is correct. And you are halfway there. If oxymoron is worth more than $150, you will be our new champion. How much is it worth? $300. You did win $1,750 today, coupled with the $5,700 you won yesterday, gives you a grand total of $7,450. Congratulations, enjoy all that loot. And we've got some nice parting gifts for you. And Luana, come on down here. Come on down. Because in a moment, you're going to play our bonus game worth $5,000. And we'll see how you do right after this. We'll be right back. Here's how we play our bonus round. The object of the game is to get from one side of the board to the other by connecting those boxes. Hidden behind each box are two definitions of a single word. For example, if you picked seven, mm -hmm. you'd see ship's floor and card pack. The answer is deck. You'd then move on to eight. Paper fastener, money holder is a clip. You'd be rolling right along. You'd go to nine. If you didn't know that men's underwear and lawyers' memos were briefs, you would be blocked. Okay. And then you'd have to go up to number two and go across, or down to 14, the row below, and go across, all right? 
all boxes going across the board must be connected side by side, all right? You've got 45 seconds to get across the board. Okay. Let's set the clock. All right, good luck, Luana. Thank you. Choose the first box. Seven. Bride's party brief rainfall. Shower. Right. Eight. Duck beak dinner check. Bill. Right. Nine. Any insect hidden mic. Bug. Right. Ten. Learning building fish group. School. Right. Eleven. Twelve dozen quite vulgar. Pass. Sixteen. Harvest supply riding whip. Crop. You got it. Seventeen. Playground apparatus forties jazz. Swing. Right. Eighteen. Burger topping enjoy immensely. Pass. Okay. Twenty-three. Conceal oneself, animal skin. Hide. Right. 24. Military rank, college specialty. Major. You did it. $5,000. Added to your $1,900, gives you a grand total of $6,900. Congratulations. Here comes the game to congratulate you. $6,900. Not bad. All right, let's take a look at the two you missed. We've got 11. 12 dozen, quite vulgar, that's gross. And let's go to 18. Burger topping, enjoy immensely. That is relish, the only two you miss. And you'll be back next time to play again. And I want to thank our great panel, our celebrities, Mr. St. Jack. Thanks, sir. Enjoy having you. Betty. Oh, thank you, my dear. Thank you, Peter. Terrific. Stuart. Thanks very much. Thank you. Great. And we'll be seeing all of you next time on Wordplay. Bye-bye.